Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you guys for being with us once again. And so we'll start out talking about Hurricane Dorian. So over here, we're looking at the uh, off of weather.com. Hurricane Dorian is going to pound the coasts of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia through Friday. So right now, if we look at like what's going on and the position of Hurricane Dorian, we can see right here, you can see the satellite view. So bands from the storm are coming ashore right now. You know, I want to thank everybody out there that has been putting their intention on pushing the storm away and keeping it off of land because it hasn't made a landfall, guys. It has not made a landfall. Now, as we're going to see, there's thinking that there could be a landfall somewhere in the middle of South Carolina through the North Carolina coastline. So let's keep sending our positive intentions and prayers, visualizations, and realize the power that we have when we band together to actually affect positive change. There is tremendous positive change that we can have occur uh, if we all band together. And it's, it's us right here in this family that's doing it, but there's others out there as well. More and more people are coming online to the idea that we don't have to accept the status quo. We don't have to accept the doom and gloom and all the things that we keep seeing. And really, when you listen to the media, a lot of people are getting the impression uh, that it's it's hyping fear. We know that you know fear sells. That's something that does you know has happened and and is true. Fear does sell, and it gets people watching things yet we can't change outcomes and i know to a lot of people because you know i'll read the comments they'll there'll be people out there that will get that they really get that and they're like come on guys let's do it we could do this let's use our intent and if you guys haven't seen it uh, dr emoto's experiments on water showed that intent can change the composition of water and of course these storms they're full of water, as are we. And if we get thousands of people all doing the same thing, when we learn a little bit about quantum physics, you know, the modern science that we now have, we recognize that it's all about the observer in this world. So the very act of observing creates the reality that we are seeing. So we can guide our reality if we band together we can affect positive change. And over here again, you see current location of Dorian. It's staying off the coast. So again, we're going to try to put our intent to push it out. Now, what they're saying here uh, is that you have a lot of different warnings on online right now, especially in South Carolina and going up into North Carolina along the Georgia border as well. They're expecting conditions to worsen along those areas into Wednesday night. Peak impacts will arrive in North Carolina, southeasterly Virginia, Thursday into Friday. Dorian could then strike the Atlantic Canada as a post-tropical storm this weekend. So currently a Category 2, uh, the wind strength has sl slightly strengthened. And right now you're looking at 110 miles per hour. It's about 150 miles south of Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah, definitely one of my favorite cities in the world. I, I love this whole area. To me, this is just a great area. And uh, so, you know, my heart's with everybody down there in the area itself. And if we've seen, we have seen what this particular storm did to the Bahamas. It was absolutely uh, devastating. And in fact, uh, they're going to probably retire the name Dorian because of the devastation it did to the Bahamas and the strength it achieved. As it says here, Hurricane Dorian has literally obliterated parts of northwestern Bahamas. The devastation will likely lead to the name Dorian being retired. And Dorian will also likely be damaging in the southeast U.S., similar to another retired Hurricane Matthew. So... You know, this was a massive storm at one point, Category 5, maximum sustained winds of 185, and you had uh, gusts up to 220 miles per hour. 
And again, this is a key message for Hurricane Dorian, and this is from NOAA. Uh, Life-threatening storm surge, dangerous winds are expected along portions of the Florida East Coast, the coast of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and portions of Southeast Virginia and the Southern Chesapeake Bay. Regardless of the exact track of Dorian Center, water levels could rise well in advance of the arrival of the strong winds. Be aware of that. So the water could come before you even notice the winds picking up. Residents in these areas should follow advice given by local emergency officials. Flash flooding will become increasingly likely across coastal Georgia into the eastern Carolinas tonight into Friday. There is a high risk of flash flooding over the coastal sections of the Carolinas, where significant life-threatening flash flooding is expected. So our prayers, again, our intentions to everybody in that area. Let's, you know, push that storm out and uh, let's have Dorian be something of the past. And, of course, send our prayers and best wishes to everyone that has been in the path of this thing, especially in the Bahamas, where it's been so, so intense and so much damage going on. And uh, good to see everybody in, in chat there. A lot of wonderful people with beautiful energy. And uh, as Ed says, love this crowd, positive energy. It's all about the positive energy. We see what's going on. You know, we recognize the fact that these earth changes are real. And, you know, we've talked about all the causal effects about all these things uh, in so many videos. I, we must be getting close to 2,000 videos on this channel now. I, I lost track. Uh, but it's been also, we've just gone past our two-year anniversary for the channel. So the channel's been in existence for two years now. So thank you guys so much for all your support with that and being part of this family. Uh, through all the technical difficulties, all the, you know, censorship that we've seen. Uh, in case you guys missed it, there are... 17,000 channels that don't exist anymore on this venue as of just uh, yesterday. So big, big changes uh, going on. And Sassy Susie says, make sure you're subbed because it's true. I'm constantly seeing people that have been with the channel for you know a year and a half for close to the two years it's been going. And you know, they're, they're having to resub because they got unsubbed. So, you know, it's something to be aware of. Definitely be aware of it. And then I also want to thank everyone that's been going over and joining our Patreon, which we really just got really going, up and going. And so the videos on Patreon are hosted by Vimeo. So this is in a venue that basically um, we feel like we could just say our mind clearly without any sort of fear of retribution or censorship. So been posting things that are a little bit more um, touchy over there, to say. And uh, so there are videos that are available for Patreons uh, that are not on this particular venue, just so you know. There's different ones there. And uh, there'll be different ones there going there. And then you could become a Patreon and support the channel for as little as $1 a month and uh, get access to those videos as well and see them as soon as they are put up. And it does also help support the channel uh, and keep it rolling, keep the information going out, and keep building the family. So we have Tropical Cyclone Ling Ling forming in the Western Pacific Ocean heading towards the Korean Peninsula. This is the 14th named Tropical Cyclone of the 2019 Pacific Typhoon season. So it's been pretty busy over there. It's heading towards the southern Ryukyu Islands, Japan, and the Korean Peninsula. And the Pacific Ocean is looking to remain very active in the days and weeks ahead. And then we also had Tropical Storm Poldul killing five in Thailand, damaging a thousand homes. And now it's weakened into a low tropical depression after it made landfall on north central Vietnam. Average wind speed was only 25 to 37 miles an hour, but again, it's the rain. It's the rain on saturated grounds that causes the problems and the flash flooding. August 2019 
was another record-setting month for Steamboat Geyser. And uh, this is, of course, in Yellowstone. And Yellowstone, you just say that word, it gets everybody's attention. So Steamboat Geyser, which experienced water eruptions on August 12th, 20th, and 27th. The 27th eruption was the 33rd. Oh, look at that, 33rd. <laughs> the magic number of 2019 breaking the record for eruptions in a calendar year and that was set in 2018 so that was just set last year and so here we are and you know basically we're going into the last segment of the year and it's already smashed so it's definitely an uptick and then you had some evidence of possibly uh, some magma underneath certain areas with some dead zones going on interesting interesting to watch and of course you know all of us are praying that Yellowstone will stay dormant for a very very long time and as we could see here field work in Yellowstone National Park during the month of August included maintenance work on the temperature monitoring network in the Norris Geyser uh, Basin as well as a field visit to the new thermal area near, near West Turn Lake on the east side of Yellowstone Geologists mapping the region and measuring ground temperatures in those places that reached 198 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, that's a hot <laughs> piece of ground right there. That's a hot chunk of land. And that's the boiling temperature at that elevation. So that's interesting. There were no water springs in the new thermal area. So they're going to give uh, more information about the visit here with uh, a link. And there's also a video as well. And more meteors. So we have a bright meteor event over Spain on September 3rd. And this was generated from a rock. That This rock was generated from an asteroid that hit the atmosphere. And uh, it began about 56 miles over the province of Caceres and ended at a height of around 21 miles. And there's video. And we also have this bright fireball and a loud boom reported over Lake Ontario. So we had a lot of activity going on. And there's those that are expecting us to get visited by three large asteroids that are supposed to make an impact. And there's different prophecies and visions that people have had about that. And this is not something you see every day. A dolphin catapulted out of the water by Hurricane Dorian's winds. Look at this. I hope that dolphin uh, landed in the water. Kind of looks like he's heading towards the land there. That's pretty incredible shot. A flying dolphin. So dolphins swim away from hurricanes. And when they get closer to shore in shallow water, they can be swept away by the winds. Look at that shot. You know, it's that doesn't look like the dolphin's going to land in water. Purple sunsets. And several of you guys have been mentioning purple sunsets. Have you guys noticed any purple suns sunsets? Well, it's as it says here, be alert for purple sunsets around the world. And if this happens to you, blame a volcano. It's a beautiful color. So this summer, two volcanoes have spewed sulfurous, sulfurous ass gas into the stratosphere. The Rikoki volcano in the Kuril Islands and the Ulawun volcano in New Guinea. And so these fine volcanic aerosols in the stratosphere scatter blue light, which when mixed with ordinary sunset red, produces a purple hue. Video there as well. And uh, definitely a beautiful color. Definitely a lot of changes up in the sky. And there's some crazy lightning for you, for you guys to check out. And this was um, up in Alberta. Struck a house in Calgary. The residents managed to escape uninjured. It's just so wild to watch how the lightning bolts roll. And got to wonder, why do they take the exact path that they take? Pretty insane pretty intense. So Victoria experiences record cold August. Multiple sites averaged their coldest month ever. So this is talking about the looming grand solar minimum. 
it's been just so interesting watching all the data coming in from all sorts of sources and these extremes because the extremes just seem to be getting well more extreme and so this is according to the official climate report from Australia's Bureau of Meteorology both daytime and nighttime temperatures were colder than average during August in the state of Victoria and the daytime temperatures were well below average in much of western and central Victoria nighttime temperatures were cooler than average in the north and uh, there's other areas as well South America's dry and cold winter lowers fruit and vegetable production so a particularly dry and cold winter has negatively affected South American crop production with report after report surfacing citing persistent anomalously cold as the reason for the shocking declines in output. Chile is looking at a 9% year-on-year drop in total citrus exports according to the Chilean Citrus Committee. Breaking down the numbers, the country is expecting a 14% dip in mandarin exports. Clementines will fall 19% year-on-year. Oranges are forecast to see an 8% drop. And uh, again, so dry and cold there, and obviously not dry in, in some other areas that have been hit with so much flooding. And we've had record highs as well. Official Canadian crop estimates in wheat, soybean, and corn in sharp decline due to adverse seasonal conditions. And um, David over at, um, the, at Adapt 2030 was talking in depth about this and just talking about where we're going to be at as far as the prices going. And there's a lot of situation going on with China right now, obviously the, the hot trade war. And uh, if you look at things astrologically, if there anybody of you out there are into astrology, whether it's Western or Vedic, you know, this is a month you know, where you can have, um, well, you have Mars. It, Mars, is in, Mars is basically with the sun. So obviously Mars is the god of war and uh, sharp tempers and things along those lines. So uh, I was listening to some of the astrology reports for the month and uh, a lot of tensions could be on the rise and you know the whole food situation is getting to be a bigger and bigger issue every day and here you see again brutal Antarctic blast set to engulf the entire Australian continent by mid-September and it's all about the vortexes and and the way that the flow of the year goes so bundle up down there now this is out of Strange Sounds, and this is uh, definitely a fear-mongering title. It says cancer will kill us all. While globally, cardiovascular diseases remain the most common cause of death, in high-income countries, high-income, cancer is now the leading cause of death for middle-aged adults. So there's a lot of things we could take from that as well. You know, for one thing, and we've talked about this an awful lot, eating a lot of processed foods is not good for you. Uh, while organic may not even be organic anywhere anymore, <laughs> unfortunately, um, it, is, it is always good to eat as whole of foods as we can, non-processed. When you start looking at you know what's in something and it's got like 16 to 20 ingredients and half of them are things that sound like chemicals or preservatives, just don't touch it with a 10-foot pole. And so... Looking at this, th this is a, a clue. You know, high income countries are where cancer is spreading. And of course, you know, in a lot of these low income countries, they're just, they're growing their own food. You know, they can't afford a lot of the luxuries that we may have here. Think about it way, ba way, way back. Um, if you go back, you know, to the 1800s, 1700s, diabetes was something that really only affected the rich uh, because they were the ones that could actually afford luxuries like chocolates and sweets and you know things along those lines and there's a reason for this so while ca cardiovascular disease we're we're getting a hold on that we realize that we got to stay active you know we need to exercise every day you know, what we take into our body is very important as well. We're learning so much more about the body. Just like with uh, science in general, 
you know, a lot of things are being rewritten. And so there's so much new knowledge coming in that's enabling us to make smart decisions, those that are awake and are actually making those decisions. And as we've talked about before, um, one way to help yourself not get cancer, quote unquote, because there are cancer cells in pretty much everybody at any time, but the body gets rid of them naturally if it's functioning optimally. And also if we're giving it the chance to function in that way. So one of the things to do is to do uh, fasting because fasting will allow your body time to get rid of these diseased cells and also to basically cleanse itself. And that could be intermittent fasting. It could be as much as just simply saying, hey, I only eat between a 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. window. And that does give your body 16 hours of rest. Problem is when we're constantly engorging ourselves and taking in uh, food and never giving the body time to rest. So this report found that cancer to be the second most common cause of death globally in 2017, accounting for 26% of all deaths. But as uh, cardiovascular disease rates continue to fall, and that's good news, cancer could likely become the leading cause of death worldwide in just a few decades. But again, a lot of this is environmental. A lot of this is the food we're putting in, uh, as well as the pollutants that we're being exposed to. You know, there's, there's a lot of things. There's fluoride in the water, which has been shown to be potentially cancerous. And so we, you know, the best water I ever had was actually in the North Carolina mountains from a well. And it was amazing how good it was. It was night and day to bottled water. You couldn't drink bottled water, even distilled. It just didn't taste right. And that's another problem. The plastics uh, that cause a rise in estrogen in the body. So avoiding the plastics, um, especially BPA, and, you know, there's so many, so many things, unfortunately, for us to avoid in these uh, times because there's stuff all around us that will impact us. So we have to be constantly detoxifying. We have to have a good, healthy diet. It's just completely critical for us to do that. And uh, Matt says he did a six-day water diet, just water. Yeah, a water fast is a tough one to do. And uh, it is a tough one to do, um, but it can be great. Most definitely have an amazing effect on the body. I would work up to that most definitely uh, slowly. You might want to start with a juice fast and start with mostly uh, veggie juices like celery and cucumber, things like that, uh, to ease into it. Maybe add like a lime to it. We've um, done some videos before on uh, you know different types of juice fasting and different diets. Um, Yeti Dogs talks about top brands are tainted. You know, there's certain things I just won't buy anymore. I, you know, I wouldn't ever buy any of the big cereals, for instance. They're all loaded with glyphosate. And um, even in some of the organic ones, you'll find it as well. You find that in just about everything now, which is really very, very sad very sad um but yeah i avoid all the big brands really just as a, a matter of fact because they they tend to be the ones that have the worst uh levels of these potential carcinogens as as well as other items as well so meet the giant elephant trunks mysterious cosmic structures 10 times bigger than the pillars of creation and uh it's pretty wild when you look at some of these objects out there. Just incredible what we see out there in the universe. And uh, we've talked about the possibility that all the universe that we're looking at is perhaps just the brain, the neurons, the neural connections between uh, each of the stars are actually like a neural connection in a brain. There is such a pattern to it and similarity to it. It's amazing. And we brought up that thought, are we actually living in the mind of God, so to speak? Well, look at these structures. So they're towering formations of cosmic gas and dust, and they lie at the center of the Eagle Nebula. So they're in a nebula. They're at the center of a nebula. And so 
Ursa Major, the Tadpole Galaxy, and the Crab Nebula. When it comes to naming objects in space, it sometimes seems like astronomers wish they'd gone into zoology or Greek mythology, right? They are always naming things after the, myth, the, the old Greek myths. Continuing in this long tradition, a researcher has recently identified mammoth column-shaped structures carved from gas and dust that he has called the giant elephant's tusks. Interesting, interesting structures. So these, these are particularly interesting because they're in a nebula, and a nebula is an area of gas and dust. And so right off the bat, this gets me thinking about the photon belt or the golden nebula. For those of you that are familiar with this line of thought, because we've, we've talked about, well, what is causing all the change in this, in this world? And, you know, we've, we have most definitely uh, a sun cycle issue going on. And many people think it's, you know, the biggest grand solar minimum that we're going to have in at least hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. Yet, is that really the cause and generator of everything, everything we're seeing? Or is something causing that? Well, we also are in the middle of at least a pole excursion. You know, there has not been a full pole reversal for, for a long time. It's, it's, it's like three times overdue uh, what, when, when, you know, compared to when it should have come. Um, so we haven't had a full pole reversal in a long time. The magnetic pole is moving faster, ever increasingly faster. Uh, changing direction so that is a big thing that's going on that's huge and so is that the thing that's causing all of our issues well then there's those that believe there's also the presence of other bodies uh, whether we call it the nemesis system including Nibiru because uh, there is the line of thought that there are things in the sky and uh, that a lot of the spraying that we see going on in the sky is all about just obscuring our vision. So we won't see these unusual heavenly bodies that are not always there be there. And some think that they're basically blocking motherships as well with the spraying. While others believe they're spraying to basically decrease the UVC that's trying to make it to the ground, which it is being measured at ground level and it never was previously and UVC is according to uh, mainstream thought extremely deadly um, so there's all those things going on but you know do they explain why there's changes going on in Jupiter you know like the big red storm uh, it's decreased by over two-thirds the size and there's unusual events happening not just on Jupiter but Uranus as well, the other planets. And then we see that there's a whole section of stars in our local area that have been affected, affected by some sort of galactic wave. And many of these stars are jumping to the phase in a star's life where it turns into a red giant. So what's really going on there? Is there something much bigger going on than just a grand solar minimum or a pole reversal or Nibiru being next to us. So all that takes me back to the whole thought of the photon belt. And as it says here, or the golden nebula. And in 1961, it was discovered what appeared to be an unusual nebula. We normally understand nebula as vast cloud-like masses of gas or dust. This one was named the golden nebula, an important statement of astronomical and historical significance. In 1980s, an announcement was made that our solar system was going to collide with an electromagnetic cloud in the not-too-distant future. What is this electromagnetic cloud, this golden nebula, sometimes referred to as the radiant nebula? Its more universal designation is the photon belt, or the photon band, consisting of many bands, and any counter with this belt is recognized by extraterrestrials as of great importance. And so they're saying that because of the channeled material that we have gotten that's talked about this for years and talked about what's going to happen in great detail, uh, tremendous detail. And to me, honestly, some of the material feels very inspired. 
The whole universe is held together by means of vortices within vortices of centripetal energy with their associated electromagnetic fields like whirlpools on water within larger whirlpools. And of course, chakras are like whirlpools. They are just like a whirlpool. The same theory behind Einstein's general relativity. These spiraling energies give rise to natural space-time orbits, satellites around planets, planets around stars, solar systems around other more major vortex centers, and so on. Our planet Earth orbits the sun once a year, but our solar system as a whole also transverses an orbit in this section of the galaxy within a period of about 24,000 years. There are many other solar star systems in this cyclic motion. The Pleiades, which is encircled by the photon belt, is about 400 light years from us and it's part of this system. Our solar system orbits the central sun of the Pleiades, uh, Alcyon, and the belt consists of many photon bands emanating from the center of the galaxy associated with the spiral arms of the galaxy. This is all as above, so below. The photon belt is an immense region of space radiating intense electromagnetic radiation throughout the visible spectrum and beyond into high frequency vis invisible light, including some X-ray spectra, the magnetic flow of light throughout the galaxy. Huge increases in intensity of dangerous radiation enters through the holes in the ozone layer in certain regions of our planet. It also described as an amoeba-like cloud of particles but most of its frequencies are invisible. So this is the photon belt or the photon band. Our, star, our solar system and planet Earth takes 24,000 years to come back to the same point in this particular orbit. This means our solar system goes through the belt twice each cycle of 24,000 years. That is every half cycle. Interesting how that works out because all the numbers are pointing to the fact that we have these great periods of cataclysm about every 12,000 years. Pretty interesting how that does work out. The thickness of the photon cloud is such that it takes about 2,000 years for our solar system to pass through, and there are therefore about 10,000 years between each encounter with the spelt. 2 times 10, 10,000 plus 2 times 2,000 is your 24,000 years. Some state that the period in the band could be much less depending on man's resistance to change. This is difficult to relate to in our fixed cyclic picture. But in addition, this same source points out that Earth was in trouble from the damage incurred by our civilization and called for the photon belt, a typical emergency procedure for planets. And so this call occurred in 47 and manifested as a signal. In 1992, scientists around the globe predicted that the encounter would occur within months to a year a particular source of Pleiadian extraterrestrials indicated it wouldn't occur till after 2010 and that it was difficult to predict since the belt was oscillating randomly. On this planet, the photon belt encounter will be a spiritual experience, and it really depends on man. The real benefits of this phenomenon is from what is actually causing the photons. It's linked with so-called convergences. If we are sufficiently evolved at the time, great advancements will occur in our consciousness as we attune to the higher frequencies. If we are too negative, if, that is, we possess too many lower vibrations, the result of selfish actions or fear-based actions, we are not expected to survive the frequency, its incompatibility. So the convergence is at the end of a stellar activation cycle. These activations have already begun, will continue uh, through 2012-2017, the principal t time cycle is 26,556 years, which is the precession of the equinoxes, which is caused by the slow wobble of Earth as it spins around the sun. And so we start thinking about well, the whole 2012 thing with the Mayans, and it really is all about consciousness. They weren't really expecting the physical Earth to just you know stop. They weren't expecting the end of the world. They were saying it's the end of an age an end of a way of thinking, an end of a way of being, and also an end of, you know, in what we would say in Vedic terms is the Kali Yuga, as we are right, right now in a transitional period, right now. So to understand the alignment, one could think of circles within circles, cycles within cycles, turning at different rates to which are attached magnets. Clearly, periodically, they could line up forming one long and powerful magnet. This would act as a powerful current. 
and it's called a holographic beam containing the fundamental energy of these systems. So this was um, an interesting article. There are many very, very similar interesting articles uh, and much talk about the photon belt. And if you've ever watched or you know, any videos on Barbara Hancloud or uh, go on and read any of her books, there are quite a few very interesting ones as well. And this gets into that whole golden nebula and it gets us into the golden ages and these thoughts <clears throat> of a golden age. And so this is interesting here too. It's important to note that channeled information describes this golden nebula as manifested with the Christus or monastic radiation, basically Christ consciousness. And that was a term, um, this Christus or monastic radiation is a term coined by Samuel Un Wior, who was an interesting uh, person for sure and read a lot of uh, his works earlier on. So it's from the ancient Sumerian word manas, meaning mind. And uh, it, it just, it really does go on and kind of go together when you think about it. And this particular article gets into the Galactic Federation and the different, you know, beings that are out there as well. And so I know many of you guys are familiar with this line of thinking. And, you know, some people will just, you know, ignore this line of thinking and, you know, they have their own particular mindsets. But then there are many people that are very open minded about it. When I first heard about it, I thought it was fanciful and interesting and uh, would make a good read, but I, I wasn't really buying it. Yet, as more time has gone on, it's kind of felt more and more like, you know, yeah, there's most definitely something to this. And some of them just feel so accurate. And so there's a link here too. I'll give it to you guys if anybody's interested. And again, going into the golden nebula or the photon band and so uh, Alcyon and this is the third brightest star in its home constellation the Pleiades why does the Pleiades constantly come up it's interesting um, so many people are just drawn to that it's known as the seven sisters and its name actually means the central one so there are those that believe we are actually part of this system and we do rotate around this. And so, you know, of course, Pleiadians are one of the more famous extraterrestrial races as well. And many people have talked about that. And this is getting into the golden age of the Earth. And we have gone through these cycles. It's even interesting, um, you know, if you look at Revelation and uh, talks about, you know, when Christ's era begins in that thousand year millennial reign and then again there's a brief time of turmoil uh, before being locked up uh, you know Satan is loosed again you could even look at that and put that into this whole time frame you know again being in the golden age in this particular band of the photon belt and then we're out of it again and then we're back in and so the ancient Egyptians, the Mayans, the Hopi, many other people understood the great central sun to be a portal that redirects energy from the galactic center. With advanced knowledge of astronomy and, astro and astrology, these ancient cultures noted a perfect alignment of sun and earth every 26,000 years. And this happens on, happened on December 21st, 2012. The Hindus divided this 26,000 year cycle into four yugas, Kali, Devar, Devar, <laughs> Devapara, Treta, and Satya, the ancient Greeks into four ages, iron, bronze, silver, and golden. Modern astrologers refer to this 26,000 year cycle as the precession of the equinoxes, whereby the earth travels backwards through the entire 12 signs of the zodiac. Every 2100 years we enter a new zodiac age. The 24-hour cycle of day and night, the 365-day cycle of the seasons, 2100-year cycle of the zodiac ages, and the 26,000-year procession of the equinoxes 
are all caused by the Earth's spin on its axis in relation to the Sun. Each cycle, an ongoing evolution of consciousness as we fall asleep and awaken from night to day, winter to summer, and equinox to equinox. One complete 26,000 year cycle of the equinoxes trans transitions us through the dark ages and into ages of spiritual enlightenment. So think about that. We fall asleep and awaken. And again, it's almost like we awaken when we go into the photon belt and then we fall back asleep and forget who we are and forget so much of the higher spiritual truths. The golden age of light or the age of Aquarius refers to the transition into the fifth dimension where dreams become a reality. Souls are unlimited, manifestations are instantaneous, and experiences are perpetual freedom. What is happening now with the help of stabilizing forces is the transformation of our planet, Earth's rejuvenation and return to balance, reaching completion in the Golden Age. Along the way, there will be many profound changes, changes we can't even imagine, that will transform life as we know it into a life of total harmony with all of nature, global-wide, and thus flow out into the universe. The negativity that is rooted in fear, greed, dishonor, and violence will be gone in the golden age. And the vibrations of Earth's entirety will be love. Love, which is the same energy as light, but simply expressed differently as the pure essence of source, the ultimate power in the cosmos. This energy is the composition of souls and the key to opening hearts and illuminating minds. And it's flowing more abundantly on Earth than ever before. Exciting new spiritual energies will be coming into the planet and influencing specific areas. And economic, political, and climatic shifts are also predicted to occur. Renowned cosmic scholar Diana Cooper includes a time frame for this massive transition that is anticipated to last until the Earth moves into the 5, 5D frequency in 2032. So why are these messages being transmitted to us? Because they are motivated by the supermental cosmic force, which Sri Aurobindo got descended on Earth in Panchateri, India. So this gets into um, some channeling and, and some idea of the Ascended Masters as well. And it's all about consciousness. And so while we're seeing all this death and destruction, as you see here, too, uh, another article on transitioning into the Golden Age. Every single one of these prophecies, when you look at it, ends up with a new heaven and a new earth. Whether we're talking biblical, whether we're talking the Hopi, uh, we talked about how the Hopi talk about how in the end our star brothers and sisters are going to return and they're going to teach us how to live in harmony and peace with one another and create a new world like we had in past times. And it's not just the Hopi. There are so many others that say the same thing. Mother Shipton's prophecy about the dragon and all the destruction on the earth. In the end, what happens again? Men, beings from the stars, come down, descend on earth, and basically, again, teach us how to live in harmony. And this is out of um, Ancient Origins, the long-lost golden age. Is it just a myth? I think... Honestly, I really feel like when we are looking at Sedona, and I was really, I think I was more touched by Sedona uh, after having visited and just like meditating on it. It makes me feel like there are relics there of this golden age, of an amazing advanced civilization that was benevolent. I do feel that there's a certain vibe there. And um, there's actually legends that say that that was a city of these star beings that were here among humans, you know, and teaching us how to live in harmony. And this is another one on the new golden age on Earth. So wherever we look at, ultimately, yeah, we're going through a roller coaster ride. And, and right now, yeah, we're getting the hard end of it, but things are turning energy is turning we can affect positive change very very quickly so you know uh just like it's so easy now to get rid of a headache with somebody uh if you guys are also practitioners of energy work whether it's qigong pranic healing reiki any of those it's so easy to work on somebody and just take a, take away a migraine 
And anybody with a little training can do that. As a, <clears throat> as a you know, basically right before coming online, that's what I was doing, and the headache disappeared just like just like that from from working on them there's so much we can do right now with our intention uh it's it, it's just incredible our ability to manifest change is increasing every single day and things are changing you know, you'll notice that there's certain things you can't tolerate anymore you can't tolerate being around you know very very negative people as we go up in vibration if you're rising upwards you're just not going to be able to be around certain people anymore if they're clinging on to the negativity and they're clinging on to um, more than just pessimism. You know, the energies are much more than that. And a lot of us are going through a lot of lethargy. We're feeling very, very tired at times and we just have to lie down. And you really, a lot of times, I think what we're doing is we're really just letting go. And in Chinese medicine, all disease is dis-ease. Starts as basically emotions that are not being properly processed. These emotions can get buried in certain parts of our body or in our mind. And, you know, they can cause actual physical aches and pains. Muscular aches, you know, mysterious aches and pains all through. And, we again, it's energetic. And we are becoming more energetic, as we were just reading. We're, we're heading up in vibration. If you've ever lucid dreamed where you're in a dream and perhaps it's not going the way that you want, but then you recognize that you're in a dream and you turn it, you twist it. And so we can do that and we have the ability to change this reality quicker now. And uh, yeah, we need to make it happen. So it says Yeti dogs, change doesn't necessarily just happen. It, well, it, it, it's, everything is changing because everything is energy. And energy can't be created or destroyed. It's just constantly changing forms. And the powers that be understand all this. And that's part of why they've been able to uh, create the reality that they want. But now we're all learning. The 99.95% of us are all learning how the universe works. And so we can start to manifest a positive change. And that's what's going to happen as we wake up. And we are waking up. We most definitely are waking up. And so, yeah, there is an evil empire out there. Is there any, like, Star Wars fans here? Anybody Star Wars fans? Um, because when you look at it, our reality might be a lot like that. There is definitely uh, a, a quote-unquote evil empire out there that has been working to keep keep their own power it's pretty much simple but the masses are waking up to this and so we're banding together and we're going to affect positive change just like you know with the hurricane and so one of my clients that's one of the members of this family uh i was talking to her earlier and she had said one of the first things she said is hey we're doing it it didn't hit florida talking about the hurricane and because we were saying from the get-go well, let's visualize it push it out to see and so it's beautiful, you know, take that belief, like like Christ said, if you had enough faith, just the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. So we just have to know we can. And, uh, you know, so many times we're, we're told we can't, but we can, we can, most definitely. As uh, Papillon says, the force is the Tao. Yes, the Tao is the force. And uh, that's where it all came from. And we've talked also about the, the Taoist immortals, the legends of these people that are Taoist masters that might live thousands of years. We talked about Saint Germain and uh, Babaji. So, you know, there are supposedly these people that had never aged because they understand uh, how the universe works and can manipulate this reality. Just like we can manipulate a dream if we are conscious of it, if we're lucid, we can. Most definitely. So we have to be aware of this. And a lot of times the key is just simply taking time to, to just be still in your own mind and just watch your thoughts. Watch your thoughts. 
and see if you could you know find any repeating patterns in there because usually the left brain is just constantly saying the same things all day long and a lot of it might be negative inherently could be negative and so i have um i have wonderful parents my dad passed on uh, a long time ago uh, my mom is 90 uh, but you know what wonderful people but my mom especially is a little bit kind of a glass half empty person you know more like uh you know every reason for why something won't go right and i love her to death but it's also limited her reality and so you know they never owned a house they never you know they always went paycheck to paycheck their entire lives and um because they just didn't think they could and that's kind of sad you know it not knowing you can it's it's one of those things where we have to put it in our minds that we can we must know we can because we will definitely create our own reality either the positive way or the negative way we have to recognize that and so much of the time we become imprisoned in the thoughts of others whether it's our parents whether it's siblings whether it's our teachers whether whoever it is that's a big influence could be your spouse you know, it could be your spouse, you know, telling you you can't do something. And that's part of why now in these times people are people are gravitating towards people that are vibrating at the same rate as they are, basically, whose consciousness are rising in unison. And a lot of a lot of relationships just are not going to make it through these times as people are evolving at different rates. And as Patrick says, yeah, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear most definitely. And uh, Lawrence was saying something about somebody in 90. You know what? I was a retirement community manager, and we actually had one couple get married where he was 96 and she was 92. And uh, they were together two years before he passed on, but it was a beautiful thing that they found true love in their 90s. Never, ever, ever too late. And it was adorable watching them get married, as cute as can be. They were a fun couple. Um, but most definitely, you know, we're not all evolving at the same rate. And when we talk about evolving, we mean our consciousness changing. Because some are still so mired in dogma that they just can't let go of things that have been pounded into their heads yet. And for each person, it's always a different rate and a different um, process to go through. Some of us have had... Um, easier upbringings than others you know I, I feel like I was very blessed with uh, parents that were well they, they kind of let me do my own thing a lot so I was really blessed in that way and uh, each of us is different along that path but the thing to take from this is even though these times are tough what happens is a beautiful transition into an amazing change in consciousness so that brings up the whole thought line too of ascension you know which is a process that we're going through but also perhaps we're going to have an actual timeline split we've talked about multiple dimensions and the fact that scientists now say yeah it appears that our brain is set up to operate on as many as 11 or more dimensions at one time and that's just our physical brain because we're way more than the brain and through meditation you can discover that you're actually you have a body but you are not the body and so it's that's something that will hit you if if you give it enough time and go deep enough that realization alone is just so eye-opening to reality it'll change you to the core and so we're going through that ascension process and perhaps we will have a timeline split and so that gets you to the whole thought of the rapture as well, where you have people just sort of apparently blink out of existence. As the Apostle Paul said, I will tell you a secret. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. And that's, that's a pretty interesting line to say, that we won't all die. What does he mean by that? So it's, it's interesting to see that. But then there's also... When we look at the uh, Australian Aborigines, they say we're going back into dream time. That we were in dream time, now we're out of it, 
and we're going to go back into dream time. So what do they mean by that? Well, they mean our reality is more like a dream. And in a dream, you could change and manifest so much quicker. And one of my favorite things to do is to fly in dreams. And it just seems like almost every other night in my dreams I'm flying. And it feels so cool to be able to fly. Has anybody ever flown in their dream? It's an amazing thing to be able to just fly. And all that comes from your upper Dantian, which is the seat of the soul, the seat of the spirit. And it's located at your pineal gland. And there's a reason why there are so many references to the pineal gland everywhere we look, hidden. And there's just everywhere we look, from the Pope's staff, you know. And there's so many papal uh, references all throughout the Vatican. You see the pine cone, which symbolizes the pineal gland. We see the Eye of Horus, again, that's symbolizing the pineal gland. It's all about awakening the pineal gland, and that's why they put fluoride in the water, so it won't awaken. And that's also why um, there's all the, well, that's a part of why there's so much frequency issues around us, so much frequency pollution. And now, especially when we, um, you know, have this whole new system coming online, you know, five, we've talked about it many times, G. Many people are very, very curious with that as well. And it's another disruptive frequency because they understand that consciousness is changing. We're waking up. We're learning the power that we have and our abilities. And so it's going to be impossible to control us. And we could see right through illusions now. We could see, many people can see auras and many people can understand by looking at the colors in an aura what a person is really saying when the politicians are lying and it's just so obvious now you, you guys know you can look at the politicians and say yep it's just a load of bs it's just so obvious and so grumpy troll is talking about shrooms and dmt there's a lot of reasons why certain things have been illegal and others not. Because, you know, alcohol for the most part will bring us kind of down. All the uh, pharmaceuticals will bring your consciousness down for the most part as well. And uh, bring us into that lower astral realm where there's all so sorts of nasty entities. And there really are nasty entities. And I'm going to do some videos from... Uh, medical qigong perspective talking about some of these nasty entities that are very real and around us all the time looking for an opportunity to basically latch onto a body just like a tick or a leech and suck our energy and uh, it is real and there are so many different dimensions with full of beings all around us whereas when you're talking about um the M word, which, you know, is, is legal in many states, California, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, Colorado, you know, what that does is that actually opens up your crown chakra. So it's actually opening up your chakras instead of pulling you down. And, uh, I was never a big proponent of it. And, uh, possibly because my own chakras were so much open for meditation. Thank you, DL. You guys are awesome, too. And uh, obviously, they, they kind of push and sell the things that pull our vibrations down because that will also control us. Yes, alcohol is called spirits for a reason. Most definitely. Most definitely. So keep that in mind, guys. At the end of this rain, well, at the end of this rainbow is a pot of gold. It's a golden age that will be coming to us. And um, there are definitely darker forces in the world that are trying to manufacture a darker outcome. But we're aware of it. We're awake. We're banding together in ever-increasing numbers. And so we're going to manifest this golden age faster than they're going to bring on the darkness. And so we're going to change the planet one person at a time as we keep waking up and growing together. So my friends, I want to thank you for joining me once again. I want to invite everybody to become a Patreon for as little as $1 a month. You guys will get uh, access to the exclusive videos that, that won't be going up on, on YouTube. 
and those tend to be a little bit more sensitive uh, and there's you know so much going on with things you you're not really allowed to say otherwise uh, channels get taken down so they will be going up there and as always like share subscribe I look forward to seeing you guys again very soon God bless my friends and namaste